Ah, so I'm back in one of my favorite places on the planet. This is Costa Rica. Costa Rica has a reputation of being a herper's paradise and it really lives up to that reputation. There is more diversity in reptiles here in Costa Rica than most other places on the planet. So I'm here with Joe Atchison from JSA Reptiles and our friend Roald de Plecker who works at Reptilandia and is going to take us around and I'm gonna show you guys some of the common reptiles that you can expect to see when you get down here to Costa Rica. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house, and I use them exclusively for all my insect-eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. So we're here in the wet season, which has its advantages and its disadvantages. One of the advantages is that it's the mating season for a lot of reptiles this time of year, and so they are out and about cruising around looking to have a sexy party. But the disadvantage is when it rains here in the rainy season, it really rains. So the first reptile you can expect to see when you get to Costa Rica is that one sitting right over there. That is a black spiny-tailed iguana although I don't think that one got the memo that he is a black spiny-tailed iguana. But spiny-tailed iguanas, these are the Tenosaurus similis, they only occur on the Pacific side of the country, and they are one of the most common lizards on the Pacific side of Costa Rica, more so even than the green iguana. But you can encounter these guys while taking a walk in the rainforest or around human habitation. And as a matter of fact, even in some of the towns and villages and even in the bigger cities, you can see spiny-tailed iguanas. So speaking of big lizards that you can see here in Costa Rica, have a look at that guy right there. That is a big, beautiful male brown basilisk. Look at the sails on his back and on his tail. And he's literally right on the side of this road that leads into the town that we're going into. But that, again, is why Costa Rica is so amazing for reptiles and amphibians. You can see just cool stuff like this just walking down the road. This is a gorgeous male brown basilisk. I can't believe he's just sitting still like that. Literally right on the edge of a road. He's literally right on the edge of this busy road. He's just sitting there. Man, is he beautiful. Big old male brown basilisk. I don't know that I've actually seen one with such a huge sail on his back and on his tail. That is a very proud male brown basilisk. All right, guys, take a look at this. This is one of the reptiles that I really hope that I would see down here in Costa Rica. This is a spectacled caiman, and he's just a few feet in front of us, and you can just see the tip of his nose and his eyes there. These guys have a ridge between their eyes that kind of looks like he's wearing spectacles, and that's where the name spectacled caiman comes from. But this guy has found the perfect habitat niche right here. This isn't even a river, this is like a little creek. But he's got places to sun himself, he's got shelter, and there's tons of food for him here. There's crabs, there's fish, there's mammals, there's snails. Everything that this crocodilian needs is right here. But the other crocodilian native to Costa Rica is the American crocodile. And there's a place where you're almost guaranteed to see the American crocodile. We're gonna visit that place later. But this guy, you really have to work hard to see one in the wild here in Costa Rica. I'm, I'm Dave Kaufman and this is, this is sticking my hand right in a swarm of bees. Anticlimactic. These are actually stingless bees. They don't even acknowledge that I'm here. Look at that. But there's a lot of them.
So the best way to see Costa Rica's amazing reptiles and amphibians is to walk around the rainforest at night. Most of the reptiles and amphibians in Costa Rica are going to be nocturnal. So we're gonna hike up this mountainside in a primary rainforest. This rainforest has never seen a plow. It is as old as Costa Rica itself. And there could be some really amazing reptiles and amphibians to be found here. All right, look at this. That is a good sign. Bushmasters are here. So the first snake that we found up here on this mountain is this guy. This is a really interesting colubra. This is called a coffee snake. And these are really unique because they have a triangle shaped body, unlike a lot of other colubrids. But this is an adult and this is all the bigger they get. But man, these are cool. These are earthworm eaters, they're frog eaters. And he was just out here, just kind of cruising along. But these are common little leaf litter snakes that you can find here in Costa Rica. And these are called leaf litter snakes because they do exactly that. They live in the leaf litter. And he just musked me, <laughs> and so I can smell that. So thankfully, I, well, don't have COVID. But again, this is called a coffee snake, and we're just going to let him go right back in the leaf litter where we found him. So this little guy right here is one of my favorite little tree frogs that you can find in Costa Rica. This is a clown tree frog and these are becoming more and more popular with hobbyists. And so a lot of you may recognize this frog, but this is one of the smallest tree frog species here in Costa Rica. So this is actually an adult and look at how small he is. He fits right on my finger. But these guys are like snowflakes. No two have the same pattern. And that's what I think makes these so unique. But just look at those yellows and that kind of mottled pattern that these clown tree frogs have. So again, a clown tree frog, one of the smallest tree frog species that you can see here in Costa Rica. All right, buddy, go on back. Oh, you wanna stay with me? You can stay with me. But really, you should go back to Costa Rica. Come on. There you go, buddy. Man, such an amazing little guy. So one of the other amphibians that you can see at night is this little toad. This is a forest toad. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that really cool colors on him. He's got those oranges and those blacks, but look at those cranial crests. They're really well defined on this toad. But this is the second biggest toad species here in Costa Rica, only rivaled by the marine toad. This is a marine toad, and this is the one that is causing havoc all over the world from Northern Australia, where it has just completely decimated the local environment, to South Florida, where these are invasive. And as a matter of fact, this could be one of the most invasive amphibians on the planet. But here in Costa Rica and throughout Central and South America, this is where these marine toads are native. These are also called cane toads, and this one isn't a very big one at all. This guy is big, but he's not a very big one at all. They get much bigger than this. So when it comes to common toad species here in Costa Rica, this species, the marine or cane toad, is the most common toad that you're gonna see down here. So another of Costa Rica's common amphibians that you can see here is this guy who really needs no introduction. This is the iconic red-eyed tree frog. This is the frog that is probably the most photographed frog in the world. These really iconic tree frogs exist all over Costa Rica on the Caribbean side and here on the Pacific side. The only place they don't occur is in the central mountain range. So if you're on either side of the mountain range, either on the Caribbean side or the Pacific side, you have a good chance at seeing this really common and iconic frog. But the red-eyed tree frog actually has geographic variation depending on where you find them. 
Here on the Pacific side, look at the sides of him. They don't have that rich, vibrant blue color like they do on the Caribbean side. And if you're coming to Costa Rica and you dream about seeing this frog in the wild, I've got good news for you. These guys are actually extremely common and there's a really good chance that you can run into the iconic red-eyed tree frog. All right, guys, look at this. This is the first boa I have seen in Costa Rica. That is amazing. Hi, buddy. So it's morning. I'm at my hotel and I'm just going down to get some coffee, get some breakfast. And this guy is sitting right here. Holy buckets. That is amazing. Look at, he's coming out of this walking tree. That is astounding. Wow. So one of the dream snakes down here in Costa Rica is this guy. This is boa imperata. This is not a true red-tailed boa. This is a Costa Rican boa. These are found from Mexico all the way down into South America. Finding this guy means that now every country that I've been to south of Mexico, I have found the boa imperata. I found these in Peru, I found these in Ecuador, and now I found these in Costa Rica. So usually what I'll do before I turn that camera on when I'm dealing with a big boa like this out in the wild is I'll work with them for about 20 minutes and just kind of calm him down. You can see he's getting much more calm right now. But when I did the boa in the wild video, it's actually pretty funny that people would comment that I actually took a captive bred boa into the Amazon of Ecuador in a country where herpticulture does not exist. So it's funny that people think that because those snakes were so calm in that video, that people actually thought I went up to some guy in Quito and said, hey, can I take your captive bred boa into the Amazon for five days without food and water so that I can film it in the wild? It's actually kind of funny, but this is what a fresh caught wild boa does. He'll hiss, he'll open his mouth, he's already tagged me once, but you can see this guy simply does not want to be held. And what he's doing is, this is a defense that he has. Even though this is a powerful constrictor, they really don't have a lot of defense against predators. They have no venom, and if a giant predator, like a person, comes up to him, all he can do is try to scare you away. So right now, this guy is thinking that he was just caught by a big shaved ape, and that big shaved ape wants to make a meal out of him, and he's doing his best to scare me away. But man, this is an amazing find, and this is one of the dream snakes that you can find when you come to Costa Rica. What makes this more amazing is that I literally found this 20 feet from my front door of my hotel room on my way to breakfast this morning which means that this guy is living on the hotel grounds with all those people, all those tourists, and that's exactly where we're gonna release him, exactly where he was found. I know, I'm telling him. But we're gonna release this guy exactly where we, he was found because these snakes are following scent trails out here. They're following basically super highways of scent trails out here. And if I remove him away from those hotel grounds, away from those people, it's like basically taking you off of a walking path and putting you somewhere else and you're gonna get lost. You're not gonna be able to find your way back to your house, to shelter, to food sources, if we remove him from those super scent highways that he is following. So we are going to take this guy back and release him right where we found him, right on the hotel grounds. So as far as common snakes that you can see here in Costa Rica, this is my fourth trip down here, and this is my first common boa that I have found down here. So again, as you can see, this guy is wrapping me up. He's getting a little agitated, a little stressed out. So we're not gonna spend too much time with him. We're gonna take a few photos of him and let him go exactly where we found him. All right, so that is my hotel cabana. And Joe, I am giving you the honors of the release because I don't wanna get bit again. <laughs> there we go. right back in where he came from. That is amazing. But again, look at this. He was right here in the roots of this walking tree. There's the restaurant down there. There's where you check in. There's a pool here. There's a pool behind here. Lots of tourists all over the place. And we're finding this boa right here in the middle of a hotel. Yeah, it's awesome. <sighs> this is Costa Rica. So if you're planning a trip to Costa Rica, the best advice that I can give you to see a lot of really cool reptiles is 
There are more reptile species around human habitations than there are out in this, which is a secondary forest, and in the primary rainforests. When you're approached by a guide or are seeking a guide to go into a primary rainforest, do it because it is an incredible experience. But just know that you're going to work really hard out there to see maybe one or two species. But around human habitations, you're really going to see a lot of diversity in reptiles here in Costa Rica. So give this video a like. And until the next reptile adventure from here in Costa Rica, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.